Good morning, we've got some Smart Doll crochet today. As you can see, I've got Brie here, my Smart Doll Strength, and she's modelling the top that we're actually going to be doing. It's a great top sort of summer base. It's got lots of chain there, so I hope you don't mind chain. You could use a ribbon instead if you don't want to chain it, but I just think the chain sort of finishes the look altogether. I've done the item in a four-ply cotton. They are both mercerised cottons. We have a King Cole Giza and we have a Peyton's 100% cotton. As I said, they're both four-ply, and I just think the mercerisation gives it a little bit of a shine you can make the top in any four ply yarn to be honest but I just think the cotton gives you a little bit more definition and that is why it is a cotton that I would use we are using a three millimeter crochet hook I can you see that it's a little bit blurry there uh, oh nearly knocked her over then doesn't really help does that help you can see the three better there can't you so three millimeter crochet hook and my scissors and my needles and a trusty pen and paper to one side because i've actually mapped out this pattern in a graph form at the moment i do need to write it out in full because i will be offering it on my website for people to purchase if they want an actual pattern now i will also be making some of these as well so those people who do not crochet wish to purchase they can then come to me for that because i've got quite a few different colors in these so this should be quite a nice selection so i'm going to move brie to one side over there you go and we're going to get going i'm going to start with a slip knot like we always do remember i'm using uk terms as well i'll move my scissors out of the way over you go and i'm going to make nine chain one two three four five six seven eight and nine now that number nine is not a stitch it is my turning chain so i'm going to go into the next one a long and we're going to do eight double crochets so we've got one two three four a bit tight my chain today five six it's curling up straining out six seven and just one more to go and number eight or not now if your chain is too tight you will have trouble getting into stitches but you do need it relatively tight as well now that's just my slip now at the beginning so i'm just going to tighten that up so i have eight double crochet stitches now now we need to do a bit of an increase so my next row is an increase row but it is still double crochet so i'm going to do one chain then i'm going to turn and the stitch directly below just here is where we're going to do two double crochets so in we go we go one and two that's our first increase we are then going to be doing six individuals. So one, two, three, four, five, and six are just double crochets. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now the last one is a little bit tricky to get into and can you see it sort of makes it like oh that's the one but you need more than that. I'm just going to pop this down and I'm going to grab a needle to sort of try and show you a little bit better here. So yes you'd be tempted to just pick that up but that will make your sort of end stitch quite loose. There is another part to it it's just gone tight so if we just pull it up you can see we then have two little loops and those are the two little loops we need to go into for some reason it's only that first bit that does it after that it doesn't seem to be so bad so in we go there we go so just spread it out with a needle and two double crochets so now we have 10 stitches we're going to do a chain and we're going to turn and you're going to do one double crochet into each of those 10 stitches now so directly below where the chain is because the chain's not counted as anything and off we go so one two three four five six seven eight nine and number 10 is that tricky one again to get into but it's not as bad as it was first time make sure we do get two pieces so you need to shuffle it about a bit there we get we get the two and there we go so we have 10 stitches across now i'm just marking these down 
on my page as I go so that was 10 we need another increase row and that's going to give us 12 so one turning chain doesn't count as anything it's just purely to position you and make it a little bit easier we turn it round directly below the chain the stitch here we're going to do two double crochets that's our increase we're then going to do one double crochet all the way to our last stitch so that would be double check on count here one two three four five six seven eight double crochets before that last one the counting is quite important with this pattern and usually you can get away with it when i'm doing amigurumi but so that's two three four five six seven and eight and our last one is an increase so it is two double crochets again making sure we get both parts there we go one and two we now have 12 stitches let's mark that down and we're going to do one double crochet in each stitch so we're going to do our chain and turn and we should be able to count 12 stitches now hopefully directly below so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten just under my yarn a little bit there we go ten eleven and our very last awkward one is number 12. so we have 12 stitches again you can see how we sort of starting to sort of veer out on both sides and it should be equal on both sides if not you've probably miscounted somewhere the amount of times that in the past i've undone even with this pattern to be honest i'm making it i undid quite a few times to get the lines right so don't worry if it goes wrong first time persevere you can do it we're now going to be moving on to our half treble row now normally a half treble row would start with two chain but i'm going to break the rules here i'm going to start with three because i just found it made it easier when you get to the other end with the, with the other stitches that we're doing not usually that way it is usually two but i'm going to go with three one two and three you can see it's a bit tight there turn in it stitch directly below this now counts as a stitch this time on the one chain it didn't but on the three chain it does and this space directly below the chain i'm going to do a half treble so yarn round in pull it through three on the hook and it comes through all three or if you have to do it in sections like i just did that is fine as well now we're going to do a one half treble and a one half treble in the next two one and a one and now we're going to start our first sort of space in the top so we're going to do six chain one two three four five and six we're going to miss six stitches one two three four five and six so here is number seven where you're going to want to go next okay so make sure you know where that stitch is because we need to make sure it matches at the other end yarn round now this half treble is a bit of a pain to do to start with it goes in it pulls it through make sure you get your three in line you may need to swivel that chain around a bit and we pull to all three and we did it the next one is going to be a half treble too Ta -da! and our last one because it needs to be an increase at each end for this one is going to be two half trebles so we have a one and we have a two so that's our first space now that you'll find the rows are going to alternate for a while you go half treble row double crochet row half treble row double crochet row so on and so forth so our next row is a heart is a double crochet so one chain there for turning and we turn now we need to make sure we're getting one stitch in each of these stitches plus six double crochets over these chains you'll see what i mean by over not into the chain in a moment so here we have four stitches so one first one's directly below isn't it so that's one two three and you get to that one and then you go oh, where's my fourth it's a chain it is there it's just the way it's lined so i basically went for that first chain and that was number four yep so we got it gives us four stitches we need those four stitches and then we're going to do six um, i keep wanting to say trebles double crochets over here so 
So that's three, four, five. Move the yarn a bit. And six. So you can see I'm just going into the hole and doing a double crochet over it. Now the last bit, again, we need to make sure we've got a four. So I'm going to count backwards here to make sure I do it. I have one, two, three. And there's actually one here. Don't miss it. It's very easy to miss. In fact, let me get a needle again to show you. So if I counted, this is the first stitch. It looks like it's part of the chain, but it's not. It's there. It's the first stitch. So one, two, three, and four. Okay. We need that four because it's got to be equal either side. So one, two, three, and it's like the top of the chain, you know, the three we did. So it's always a bit of a fight to get in that one. And four. Okay, so that is our first space as you can see the next one does increase slightly not a lot so that was our row eight where we did one double crochet into each of the things so the next one's an increased row and we need to change those middle stitches a little bit so it's three chain because it's a half treble row one two and three and turn one half treble directly below because it is an increase. Okay. Oh. And then one half treble into each of the next two, like you did on the previous one. One and two. Okay. So now we're going to do eight chain this time. It's not an easy pattern this to describe. So I'm hoping this is going to come across okay. So we've got eight. One, two, three four five six seven and eight and you see i'm keeping it really tight so now we need to miss eight so one two three four five six seven eight now at the end i need to make sure i have a two a one and a one so this is the one that i want to go into remember that's a bit tricky that half treble because it twists so take your time and you'll get it there you go then another one and in the end, two half trebles. Make sure we get both pieces, done it. One and two, okay? So we have the equivalent to two half trebles, a single half treble, a single half treble. And at the end, single half treble, single half treble, two half trebles, okay? The next row is going to be a double crochet row where we're going to be going over all that. So one chain and turn into the base of that chain so we have one stitch two stitch three stitch remember that four is always a bit weird because it sort of looks like it's into the chain but it's not and now we need eight over this one two three four five six seven and eight now don't worry if they all bunch up at that end you can shuffle them all along in a second so now we need to make sure remember we had four at this side we need to make sure we have four at the other side i'm just double checking my counting one two three four one two three four five six seven eight and four right so we need four stitches at this side so there'll be one at the end then there'll be this one then there'll be this one so this here is a stitch one two three always count from the back if you're not sure it does help and the last one because it's top of the chain is difficult and in we go right now i said about these you can shuffle them along just sort of just stretch them along a little bit yeah can you see what i've done there now you may find you want to do these a couple of times because like I say, I'm quite pleased with that row. That's nice and smooth. This one's not bad as well. But sometimes when you're going over this bit, your stitches can get looser or tighter. So it doesn't look as even. I had to unpick mine quite a few times on the first time round of this. So don't worry if you have to unpick it, as I say, it's just a bit of patience. So we are now on another row where we're going to make a hole. So three chain, one, two and three and turn half treble into the base. 
okay so that is your increase we're still going to do eight chain here so this quantity isn't going to change at all i'm just marking off where i am that's the first set of eight we did and then the first we are on row 11 now and um, we're going to have the two in there but then we're going to have one two and three yeah oh that didn't go round round it goes one half treble two half treble and three half treble okay so if you've got that here, you're going to need that at the other end. But we need our eight chain first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. If you're not sure where to count, you should count eight across and it should land it. But if it doesn't, you want to double check. You know the last one's going to have two. Then we're going to have a one, a one and a one. So that is where the next first half treble is going to go. So that is where the stitch is going. So yarn round into there pull it through pull it through and did it in two bits but it doesn't matter and we need another one half treble another one half treble and then two half trebles in the last for our increase one and two you notice i sort of turn my work sideways i don't sort of work along like that that's just how i hold my work it's however suits you for this one chain because it's a dc row so we turn one double crochet into each one now there's five here now one two three four and as i said that last one's not visible but it is there we get in five eight across the chain one two take your time for this bit three it's important it's neat four five six seven and eight it's important because it's the first bit you see in the center of the top so it is important it's smooth so we need five here so i have one two three four and remember it's just before we get to it it's just there so we have one two three four and our very last one wiggle it in and five okay so we now have the three lines we do make another line but it sort of doesn't make sort of as much of a sort of an obvious gap as this so that was row 11 and row 12 we have 18 stitches on there now we're going to do another row where we're going to increase and this is going to be our last increase you'll be glad to know so three one two and three turn did half treble in the directly below the chain so we have one i'm going to double check my quantities where am i I'm lost where i am myself one two three four yeah so now we need four half trebles one two three and four okay so we now need our eight chain again this yarn is definitely right it's rolling around all over the place it's doing its own little movie so we need one two three four five six seven and eight now we need to make sure we've got the same amount of this end as we have on this end so double check your quantities you've got one two three four five six this time haven't you so we have two in the last one three four five and six so that is where the last one needs to go i just find it easier to count back rather than say miss because it's so easy to miscount when you do that so it's one two three four and then two in the last one five and six one chain to turn and it's just one double crochet into every stitch remember you've got six there then eight over the chain so here we go for our six one two three four five and six eight over the chain one two three four 
two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And then we need six over the last. So count from the back to make sure you're going to get your six. Now there's no increases is the here. So we've got one. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and your six is this very weird one just there. Six. And just double crochet to the end then. As soon as you know you've got your number, you can just then safely just go along with the stitches. Okay, so those are that's it. That is it for the holes. We have no more holes there. We are now going to just be doing double crochet rows. So we've just done that one and we've just done that one. So I now have one, two, three, four, five, and six rows of just one double crochet. So to turn in the one below and off we go just for six rows. And then the base of the top is finished we do have to work all the way around it because we have to make some little loops as well for those chains the chains probably take the longest to do because you do have 120 chains for each strap not just one for each one and i couldn't really do them in advance because you have to do them actually on the top it's not something you do separate so I know it looks a bit wavy at this point. Don't worry, because it will flatten out as you do the cup, as you do the six rows that I've just said you're going to be doing. So this is row one. Make sure you get that last one. Too easy to miss that last stitch. The amount of times I've done that myself. So one chain and turn and just one double crochet into each row. So this is our second one of six. And so it's one of those patterns that I think is a little bit sort of weird. I know when I was making it to start with, I'm like, oh, I'm missing stitches. I'm doing this. And I did go wrong. Um, sort of persevere. But then after I've done it the once, so I'm like, oh, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> Sometimes you learn from your mistakes. You can see it's starting to flatten a little bit better now. And when you go round it at the end, it also flattens it out. I know when I was making it, first one I made, at this point I was worried whether it was actually even going to work. I'm like, oh, it looks a little bit weird, you know, it's pulling here, it's, it's loose there. and But it, it does, when it's all put together, it works out fine. Right, so that's row two, row three, uh, one chain and turn. Let well, me see if you stretch it out like that. You just need to move those along a little bit, make sure they're all nice and neat in place. Off we go for row three. I say I wouldn't say a beginner couldn't do it, but I would say if you're a beginner, watch the whole video first, see how you feel. Um, I think a beginner could easily do it, but you might need a little bit more patience. So it depends on how patient you are. Because I know I certainly needed patience at the beginning of this, but I am so pleased with the result. I think it was sort of well worth that little bit more effort to sort of try and explain it. It's flattening out nicely now. Right, that was three. So one chain and turn. And we have our row four. So you're not far off. There is actually, if you're wanting to check here, we should have 20 stitches. We've only got three there and uh, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. I presume you can hear that siren. <laughs> Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. It's looking promising. 
16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 yeah it would have been a good idea actually to have checked earlier but yes we still have the right amount so that was row four row five we have one chain and turn now don't forget if you're finding i'm going a little bit fast please slow me down at the settings if you want to speed me up you can speed me up also in the settings there one double crochet row it's a difficult one to get the speed right for everybody i noticed a lot of people comment that i'm too fast um and then i saw another video somebody else had made a lovely video and they said she was too slow <laughs> so you you can't really when you try and go slow to sort of help everybody but the beauty of youtube is we can stop and start and you can do that at any point um and just pause it or say fast forward it rewind it it's great so you can just take your time doing it Almost there so that is number five we've only got one more row left let me have a check where i'm up to yep that is correct because it's this sort of a right side and a wrong side you can't really tell that much so if you did do it it wouldn't matter but i want to sort of end on this right side now the only way i can tell it's all right side can you see how that sort of see the direction that sets that is what i was looking for compared with on the other side but it's it's so tiny you would get away with it so this is my last row on this part but then we're going to start going round the edge of the top which number one stiffens it a little bit and gives it a little bit more form and it's also going to give us our little loops for our chain to slide through or if you do decide ribbon but you would have to add either some other little loops or stitch your ribbon on at the top and then thread it through right so we're on our very last stitch now of this and i'm going to do two stitches in it because i want to turn the corner and sometimes an extra stitch helps you turn a corner it would if i could even do one stitch <laughs> get in there so i'm going to do one and i'm going to do two because now i need to go all the way up and all the way around but i am going to stop to do some little loops so i'm going to do one more into the next one i'm going to do a double crochet and then i'm going to do four chain one two three and four okay and back in the same stitch where i've just come out of I'm going to do a slip stitch again it's one of them fiddly hold ones but it's okay so we just get a little loop there and then just one double crochet in the next ones even when it is a half treble row I'm still only going to do one double crochet in the space okay so just one that's a half treble one so I'm just going to do one and one I want it to flatten nicely and I'm going to go all the way up to the last line I nearly not my, my uh, light flying them so here we are so I'm going to go in pull it through four chain one two three and four slip it in and make a slip stitch or not don't drop the slip stitch I'm just tell me you know i absolutely detest slip stitches really <laughs> they're so important but i hate doing them right go on your little so and so it's twisting and it's there we go i'm in and then carry on one double crochet in each end of each line now this bit now it's up to you you could have sewn that in if you'd wanted to i'm going to actually crochet it in so i'm just going to sort of line it along there and crochet it in so i will show you that as i go so i'm going to go in and i'm going to catch that up so it lines up as well it's just a way of not having to sew it in that's all but if you'd rather just sew it in it's easier just do it that way but i'm just picking it up and just crocheting it in to the actual work so you have to line it up i 
right i'm not going to bother beyond there and then i'm going to go back down the other side up until that first line so i'd say about that yeah so it's roughly even four chain one two three and four slip stitch oh i don't like that i'm going to take that out can you see i've left that loose um there are times it does again with cotton it's not as forgiving as sort of basic yarn so let's go back in make the sure that is tight before i do the chain one two three and four back in the stitch with that slip stitch which is a pain and then we carry on back down to the almost last one it's the next to bottom so it's going to be a bit hard to explain in writing i'm not looking forward to explaining that to you uh, on the written pattern but i'm going to find a way of doing it so i'm just doing one double crochet into each line whether it be half treble or whether it be double crochet doesn't matter they're all just double crochets and i'm about there just have a look at the other side i'm going to go one more actually and then i'm going to do one two three and four and then you're going to slip stick back in the same stitch and then i'm just going to do a stitch right at the very bottom and i've done okay so that is that part that is part one really the chain like i say is the longest part so just give it a little stretch don't worry you see how that sticks up when it goes over the doll because of the shape of these smart dolls and because of the size of the busts and that it will it sort of like goes round them so don't worry if you think oh look that's not sitting flat i found that and i thought i'd done something wrong but when it's on the doll it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference so that is the basic shape you have I'm going to say it'll stretch when it's on her but we need the chain now so i'm going to pick up here and when i've done that chain i will pick up here and on each side we're going to make 120 chain i'm not going to make you watch me do both sides don't worry about it i will show you the one side and then i'm going to take the one off Bray, and show you so i'm basically picking up i do a chain and then i double crochet back in that just anchors it a little bit and now we need 120 chain one two three four five six seven eight nine ten well that's not a long way to go yet haven't we 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 and 40 and i'm going to stop there i'm going to mark down i've just done 40 because i need to continue after and we're going to take breeze off and i'm going to show you where that sits now because as i say you don't want to watch me do 120 chains times two so we'll just undo it just got a little bow there and i'm going to undo it completely to show you what we've got okay so we'll move brie to one side there and this is what I end up with okay so you've got your your basic top there can you see that middle one for some reason does that but when it's stretched on her it's fine and then we have two lots of 120 and we have our four little parts to put on the doll now I did manage to thread these through with my fingers but you could use a needle if you needed to a real sort of chunky needle um, I've just fastened this off at the end now the way i did that in fact i ought to show you that i'm going to show you that even though i've not finished this i'll just do it later for myself i'm going to say that's the 120 and i finished fasten it off right now to get the little tassel i then just take another piece of yarn i'm going to take a finer needle because i need to get through the stitch i just find this way stops it fraying and you don't have to sew it in either 
and I just basically push it through the last stitch so we've got three make sure they're even there we go and I tie a knot and by doing that it gives you a nice end the only thing is when you're tying your knot be careful where you're going make sure you're right at the very end like I say I'll redo this later for myself and tie it tight um many needles stuck to my scissors and snipped it off and it just gives you that and it's less likely to come undone if you do it that way so that is what i've done at the end of both these so now we're going to fit it on brie you don't have to think about going over heads taking arms off it can all stay on so we're going to bring her over here and we're going to pop it just onto her like this now this is going to be hard to show you really so i'm going to turn her over and this is going to cross i'm still holding the top it's easier when you do it otherwise so i've just crossed it on each side pop it under her arms and i'm going to turn her back over and i'm going to thread it through the first loop yeah and thread this one through the first loop and so they're relatively easy to push through we go decide on the length of this bit so if you pull this up obviously that takes it right to the top which you can have it like that or i just loosened it a little bit because i didn't want it too high i went about there so now i'm going to cross it again so i'm going to turn her over and i'm going to cross it again you don't have to do this many crosses this is just how i did it and turn it back over and in one and in two this is where you'll tighten it and i'm just going to take it back around the back so she's got lots of tightenings here make it nice and neat just sort of straighten out any lines and tie a nice little bow Ta -da! And that is it that is your top done you just might need to touch it over a little bit to make sure it's central but otherwise that is it and this is what will happen with this one also as i say when it's stretched across the body you can see as you stretch it you see it will sort of uh, flatten out so don't worry but like i say because we have to do that allowance to allow for the size of the bust the thing is this will fit any smart doll size because we can just adjust this it may not cover quite as much but it will do it lengthwise but there's nice there's a little bit of movement in there so i think any smart doll bust size will work for it so i hope you enjoyed watching that video if you do enjoy my videos please like subscribe and share and don't forget i will have the the tutorial up for this one when i worked out how to describe it because as i say it wasn't so easy to describe to actually talk to you let alone write a pattern but i think i'm okay i say i've got it written down in uh, sort of like a a graph format for me to have done it but i'll get that sorted as well and i'll pop a link on but apart from that that's all we've got from smart doll land today and i will see you later bye bye for now